Hey, Coach. Um, hey. Just wondering that you, Matt Rawls mentioned several times that you've had to be quite sort of um, flexible this year in terms of what you've looked to do just due to injuries and also kind of having quite a, you know, a somewhat incomplete roster in terms of the, the long-term vision. As you go into this off-season, how much do you have to have kind of a clear plan of where you want to go as a defence in order to kind of ha evaluate players and just to, to start building something with a clearer vision in mind rather than having to be quite so flexible? Well, I think, you know, the first thing you do is evaluate the system that you're running and, and uh, um, over, you know, the offenses that we see and what we need to uh, uh, do a little bit better job with and schematically. And, and so you go through that first. And then uh, the rest of it is based on what players we end up with, right? And, you know, this league is you, through uh, free agency and, and the draft. And, and, and so what you get, need to do after you uh, look at your package is then find out who you have and then put them in situations that they can win with within your package. So that's what we'll try to do this offseason. Let's go to Sheena Quick, followed by Darren Gant. Hey, Coach. Um, my question for you, in the first meeting with the Saints, um, they did not punt. Um, you guys are a little shorthanded. I know Russell Douglas was out for that game. And what area, if you have to pinpoint what area – that the defense has improved the most since that first meeting, what would it be? Well, one of the big reasons they didn't punt is that they were 12 of 14 on third down. Um, so we got them in third down. We didn't win third down. So that'll be a key in this football game. And, and um, you know, we didn't give up a lot of point or uh, big plays, and that's why we didn't give up a lot of points. But we just – we just couldn't get off the field on third down. So that's, you know, that's got to be a priority for this week. And um, I think that's the biggest thing that uh, we've got to come to grips with. But, you know, every game that you play is, has a different personality and character to it. So, um, um, and you really, you think you know how the game's going to go, but you've got to be ready to adapt and, and do those type of things. And, you know, with their head coach, he calls the plays. He's really good at what he does. So, um you know, we'll have to be good at what we do and win third down. Phil, on the spectrum from rookies walking in the door, never met you, don't know your scheme, to a mature kind of almost finished product on a defense, where are those guys right now, the the defense as a whole? Well, you know, the young guys, um, you know, the first year in the league is, is, is tough. Um, especially certain positions, you know, like Troy Pride playing corner in the National Football League. Uh, corners is really hard to play as a rookie. Um, so each guy has a different learning curve. But, um, you know, I think we're going to be much further along when these guys come in the spring and hopefully we have, you know, OTAs and do all that stuff. But uh, they'll be so much further along. Um, so, uh, you know, I'm really looking forward to that time and, and, and how we can develop them from then. Are, are there particular guys who may be farther along than you would have anticipated the end of December? No, you know, you know, we had some high draft picks and I think they've matured uh, just fine. Uh, you know, they've got some more growing room, which they know that. And we, we you know, we'll handle that in the off season and, and through camp. And, uh, but I think the progress of most of the players have been real good. The young ones. Let's go to David Newton for the next question, followed by Mike Salarte. Hey, Phil, early Happy New Year to you. Um, Same to you. Wanted to ask, uh, when you talk about your scheme and what you did this year, how much is it different what you ended up doing from what you intended to do going into the season before KK was lost and other things like that? And in an ideal world, what would you like it to be going forward? Well, you know, I thought we would be able to play a little bit more four-man rush stuff, but, you know, losing KK and, and injuries up front. So we've, we've had to run a variety of different packages. Now, some of them have, have turned out, you know, where we may continue to run. Um, we like what, you know, what they've done for us. So, um, you know, we've had to experiment with a lot of different things this year because of, um, you know, injuries and, and other issues. So um, I think it's been good. It's been a learning curve for all of us. So um, we'll just go forward from here. And, and you mentioned Luke. Um, was, was not having a guy of his caliber side-to-side side side type outside line or middle linebacker maybe the thing that hurt you the most? Well, I mean, you don't – it's hard to replace a guy like Luke. I mean, you're talking about a Pro Bowl player and um, one of the best at his position. So, um, yeah, I mean, it, you know, uh, we'd have loved to have him, but we didn't.
Hey, Phil, Mike's the Larte Spectrum News One, uh, following David's Happy New Year, wishing you one. Yep. Um, you. Alvin Kamara last week um, is the stuff of nightmare fuel for defensive coordinators. <laughs> Anything different from what they did last week than what they've been doing all season? Did it just kind of work better last week? And how do you how do you prevent him from from running wild in the last in the last game? Well, the last game they got the run game going, and Sean just kept, you know, calling his number. Uh, um, they, it was really impressive to watch. Um, you know, he's really, uh, you know, he does a lot of things for him. Um, you've got to defend him on every down. Um, so, uh, you know, I'm sure based on how the game is going, he'll have a variety of different things that he can do. Um, you just hope that they're not, you know, you, we don't allow him to run the football like that. Um, if, you know, if New Orleans can run the football like that, you're not going to stop them. So, um, you know, hopefully that doesn't happen in this football game, but it'll be a, you know, a tough contest they're good up front and, and he's really a good runner. Kind of following up on that. Was there something that they had done differently in last week or, or just everything they did just kind of clicked and worked? Yeah, it just kind of clicked and worked and, uh, um, and, you know, you know, these tailbacks get hot and, and the offensive line, you know, when they know this guy will find every crease that they, they give them, um, you know, they, they block a little harder. So, you know, the running game was going and, and it kept going. Let's go to Joe Person, followed by Josh Klein. Phil, I think you guys have 10 of your 11 starters under contract for next year, the one exception being Rasul. Wonder uh, what you feel he brought to your defense, and it, do you view him as a priority? Well, Rasul, you know, he's played in some big games and played in the league. And, um, you know, he's got a maturity to him. He understands the game. Um, you know, he's a pro. So, you know, I've, I've enjoyed being around him this uh, this offseason. You know, you know, I don't get into who's going to be here and who isn't. You know, there's a lot of things that go into that um, that I have no part of. Uh, 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 to be quite honest. So, uh, but I've really enjoyed Rasul this year. Hey coach, um, you've talked a lot over the course of the season and, and preseason, I think in terms of player growth mm -hmm. and uh, player development. And I'm wondering how important with, just like Joe said, with 10 of 11 starters coming back under contract for next year and, and maybe a, a little bit more of an off season, how, uh, how important it'll be to be able to bring those guys even further along rather than having to focus on installing a scheme. Yeah, I mean, you know, there's so many other things too other than just football that, that they've um, had to adjust to. You know, it's how we do things, the process here. It's uh, our strength staff. It's our nutrition staff. It's just everybody. Um, and so they're, they're going to be much further along this spring. Um, you know, then when they walk in the building, they know to, what to expect in, in every area of the building. So uh, just, you know, that, com that comfort in uh, being around us and knowing us. Um, I mean, these guys will really grow in the next year. Let's go to Jonathan Alexander, followed by Elena Gutzenberg. Hey, Phil. Uh, happy New Year. Yep, same to you. Uh, thank you. Uh, at, last week, uh, when we were asking about um, Jeremy Chin, you said that um, you, I guess it was possible that um, that uh, his, he could have a different role next year. You know, you all would have to evaluate. I guess what are the different possibilities of different type of roles that you all could look at? Well, I think the biggest thing with Jeremy that we have to decide is, you know, we he we started him in the front seven, and then we have packages where he plays uh, in the back row, in the secondary. Well, you know. Uh, with his body structure and, and, and his longevity and that, is that the best thing for him? Should he be a secondary guy that we use down in the box when we need to? So that's what we have to evaluate and, and look at this off season. And, uh, you know, a lot of that will have to do with who ends up on our team too. But, um, you know, I think for Jeremy, uh, probably the best thing would be is to start him back and move him up. But, you know, we'll see. Um, and, you know, he has something to say with that. Coach Rule does and all of us. So we'll see how that progresses in the next six months. Ideally, would you like to see him continue to play multiple positions or would you ideally like to see him play just one position and, and be great at that one position? No, you know, uh, Jeremy and, and um, Brian Burns gives us flexibilities to play a lot of different packages with the same people on the field. 
and that creates a lot of offensive problems, um, blocking scheme problems. Uh, they don't know what front, what coverage we're going to be in. So, you know, I would like to continue to do that with those two. It, it, it adds so much to what we can uh, do um, based on down and distance. Hey, Phil, um, I was curious, you know, one of the things that Matt has talked about, too, is how well you guys have been able to adapt, you know, during games or to where, you know, make adjustments. And one of the guys that's moved around a lot this year is F.A., you know, kind of played more inside and outside. I was curious how you thought maybe since you first saw him, how he's developed and what kind of role you could see him having in the future. Yeah, you know, F.A. has a body that can play inside and outside. Now, when I say inside, it's primarily in passing downs. Um, you know, he can go over a guard and, and rush. So, um, you know, probably his future size wise is at end, but also being able to help us in passing situations inside. So uh, again, the versatility of the, when guys can do different things, it really adds a, a lot to what you can, and you, you can do. Would you have been able to anticipate him playing inside, you know, when the season started? Yeah, I, I did. I, I thought he could rush over the guards. Um, you know, he's a big man. He's, you know, he's 6'4", 275, and he has, you know, he's uh, uh, not not really big enough to play every down inside, but can rush inside. So, yeah, I thought he could end up doing that for us. Back to Vincent Richardson. Hey, Phil, just you, you mentioned sort of missing KK and sort of that sort of limiting what you can do in terms of four-man rushes and stuff, and also about, you know, you have to be flexible around what you end up after the off season. But is there a point where you go like, okay, we, we want to rush with four more. Therefore, you know, we have to get more of an interior pass rush. Is that something you go out and look at? Or is it just, you take the best players and if you have an interior pass rush, you rush four. And if you don't, then you, you work around. Yeah, exactly what you said at the end. But, you know, if you look at all the great defenses, they're able to rush four and cover with seven. So um, at some point we have to get to that level. That, that we can put four pass rushers on the field and they can't block them and, and we can really cover with seven. So, um, you know, that's the ultimate goal. Now, you, you do a lot of stuff around that, but uh, that's the ultimate goal.